well, I guess, well, the cat is out of the bag now. Yeah, seriously. Also, <laughs> I, I'm still watching the, the end of the trailer on the Twitch, so I got behind by a few seconds. But what's <laughs> up, everybody? Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for a very special announcement. We're very excited to announce the Arizona Smash League. I am Stephen Shackelford. With me is the founder and CEO of Cardinal Horizons, Taylor Broad. How you doing, Taylor? Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Um, you also know me as the guy that uh, also does the streaming for a lot of SAK stuff. So let's get yes, that out uh, of the way. Broadcast, yeah, broadcast director, exactly. So um, this is a project that we've had in the works for a little while, um, and we're really excited to to unveil it today. Um, so should we just jump right into it? Yeah, might as well. All right, I'm gonna pop over the slides real quick, and uh, so we'll start. We'll start off right here. All right, so. The Arizona Smash League is going to be Arizona's first esports league. It is 100% free to enter, and we have a $1,000 cash pool provided by SAK Gaming. Um, the way that it's going to work is we're going to have um, open qualifiers that will be hosted online. Then we will have group stages um, that will be hosted once per week, um, a groups of four for a total of 16 players. And those will also be held online. But the finals, the top eight finals, will be held in person. Um, if we want to yeah let's uh next, let's that. let's go yeah. let's go for the goal of this and why we and why we kind of discussed this in the first place you know yeah so this is something we actually talked about this on um the podcast a couple weeks ago taylor right was it a couple months ago yeah it was it was about a, it, it was about a good month ago like in august that's when we time is a time is a flat circle yeah and but also we've been talking about this ever since we really met yes yeah this is something that we're hoping to um, make a realization of something that we both share or a, like a, a, a belief we both share about esports broadcasting, which is that um, some of the best broadcasting that we can do for esports involves storylines, the tracking of statistics, um, high level broadcast. Uh, you know, so hopefully the, the hope is for us to bring a television level broadcast to Smash. Um, with this league format. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're going to be tracking statistics, developing storylines over time, and really create the kind of things that you see um, more in sports, where we can create rivalries, where we can have stories to tell um, in the long run. And that's something that's been a, a thing for Smash for a long time. A question pe people have been trying to answer is, how do you how do you create these storylines? Because there's, you know, these tournaments that happen all over the country, super majors, that's where the storylines happen, but you still don't get those full rivalries, right? And in those really huge uh, fields where anything can happen over the course of a tournament, maybe that player that you were really excited to see play his his rival doesn't ever get there. So this is something that we're hoping that will will start in Arizona um, and will expand over time. Of course. Um, and just because I saw some people in the chat were like, who the hell is Cardinal Horizon? Well, so Cardinal Horizon yes. is a, actually a company that I founded back in uh, back in uh, back in college. Uh, the kind of um, and and the and the goal of Cardinal Horizon is to empower storytellers, um, you know, it's uh, and create the tools to do that. Um, as for previous work experience and when we're seeing television level broadcast, I'm I'm not kidding. Television level. Um, this is our past resume <laughs> with all our people <laughs> that uh, with both myself and Derek. Uh, Derek actually works on Overwatch League right now. Um, as one of the directors, um, and, and and both of us have have actually a very storied broadcasting career in professional TV. Um, so that just gives you a, an idea of the experience behind all of this. Um, so that way you you can understand. You know, we're 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 actually we're actually serious about bringing a broadcast level production to Smash. Exactly. And, you know, ever since you joined the team as broadcast director, we've definitely seen a big improvement in our broadcast quality overall, not just for Smash Ultimate, but in Smash Brothers Melee as well, being able to integrate Slippy into our broadcasts um, and and all the improvements that we've made, just, you know, like our scoreboards, um, all of our overlays. And this is something where this will be the impetus for us to implement um, a lot of the things that we talked about with broadcast improvements, but not only that, as um, also statistics tracking and using something that your company has been working on yes it's called track gg yes track gg um and we'll we'll get that uh, get into that but the um uh but, the ba but basically track gg is sort of that it is that ecosystem of bringing all this stuff together into 
um, to be able to, it's, it's basically a storytelling ecosystem. Um, and there's many modules. There's the main graphics module. There's the show uh, management module. The graphics module actually was used at the um, at one of our recent broadcasts uh, for a uh, for for a client. Um, mm-hmm. And then the uh, there's a tournament operations module, which uh, some of that code was actually used at the um, to be able to power the text notification system that actually um, for the uh, what was it the 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 drive-in event the game on Mega Drive-in yep game on Mega Drive so there there's a whole bunch of these different modules that you know that fit in to help with the storytelling aspect of uh, of being able to of, of broadcast and whatnot so. Um, uh, I, I, I'll, I, you'll you'll find out a little bit more about it as the tournament and as everything goes on. I'll be talking a little bit more about it later on. But let's get into the structure. So pulled up the structure slide. Let's uh, let's walk through the structure real quick. Yes. So um, the plan is to have two open qualifiers. Those are going to be hosted next Thursday and Friday, October twenty second and twenty third. Sixteen players will qualify. Eight from each event. Now the qualifiers will be held online. Um, I already see people moaning in chat and I understand um, ultimate net code sucks. But one of the questions that, you know, you and I have been discussing and trying to answer is how in this very strange time can we do in-person events and do them safely? Mm -hmm. Um, And with something of this size, yeah, we have to play a lot of the matches online. The group stages will be online, the qualifiers, but we'll at least be able to have a high level in-person finals. Yes. Um, So, you know, um, Good luck with to all the Robs and Sonics out there. I don't know. I actually don't think it'll be that bad. Um, oh no, no. But, Steve, you know, Steve has been co- going crazy on on net play right now. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so two open qualifiers next Thursday and Friday, October twenty second and twenty third. Um, those will be held held starting at six p.m. Registration for each qualifier will close at five p.m. From there, from the qualifiers, we go to four groups, which will be divided by seating. And those will be double elimination groups, Thank and they'll be held one per week, yeah. November 12th, the 19th, and then December 3rd and 10th, skipping Thanksgiving, of course, because, you know, we're yeah. all trying to spend time with our families. From there, we'll have a finals top eight in person at a location to be determined, but the tentative date is December 19th. Right. So going on the open qualifier specifically, um, uh, the thing is, is that we're, so it's going to be open to all Arizona residents, uh, top eight of each qualify for the league. Um, and then winners of the first event cannot play in the second, obviously. So, so the, the so the goal is, uh, register for the first one. If you don't make top eight, the first one, you then register for the second one and try to get into the two top eight in the next one. Um, as exactly. for your your placement of the league scene, what we're doing is we're using these to, uh, these top eight qualifiers as a point system, so that way you can actually uh, so that way we can determine the seating right off the top um, and to determine what group you're in, um, and the uh, pointage is is uh, put down right right there. So um, as for the group stages, uh, this is more a little bit more of our of the way we're anticipating on seating. Don't take it as true fact. You know, some things might change. Who knows? Um, we might. Uh, espe- uh, uh, would you say we're going to take people's PR into play, like um, the uh, the fa- um, the twenty nineteen PR into play? If uh, we'll definitely. Well, I mean, we're still kind of discussing that, but the, I think the hope is to mainly focus on the focus it through seating and just use that snake order. Yeah. Um, there isn't. With the open qualifiers, there isn't necessarily a reason to maybe place a PR player over anyone else because those PR players should fall where where they're from. right. Um, and like you mentioned, there will be tiebreakers as well that will be based upon game winning percentage. So let's say you know Stroder gets first in the uh, in the first qualifier and Base Mage gets uh, first in the second one, um, but Base Mage drops two games and Stroder drops none. Base uh, Stroder gets the first overall seed. Okay, yeah, that ma- okay, that makes sense. Okay. Now, in the group stage, we're going to be using we will be using uh, double elimination groups with four per group. Now, this is interesting because um, it does create double jeopardy right off the bat. Um, you're very likely to play someone that you've played before if you end up in losers. But it also means that every single match counts, and that was something that we had discussed. You know, we could have done round robin, we could have done Swiss, but the problem with those formats is by the by the third and fourth match, you get to a point where the matches don't matter anymore because the top two players have already advanced. Right. In this way, um, you still are guaranteed at least two sets, 
and all the sets are best of five and every set matters. And if you lose, say you lose in your winner's match, then you have a chance to still make it out. on. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, in keeping with the viewer experience, every single match in this tournament is going to be streamed. There will never be a off camera match. We are going to be. St- yeah. Um, everything will be streamed. In the league, in not the in the league. qualifiers. Qualifiers, oh, too yeah. many matches. Yeah. But in the, <laughs> once the league begins, yes, yeah, that's that. Yeah, every match will be streamed, and the you know the groups will be determined in advance. So again, one of the interesting things we'll see here is unlike a, ra- a standard tournament where you go in and you play people, you know, um, based on seating, and it's a little different every week. Um, the groups will be determined weeks in advance. So especially for the players in you know, well, even just in general, there will be a two week gap between the qualifiers and the group stage. So players will be able to to plan and know who they're going to play and what their most likely path is and begin to, to strategize, which I think yeah. will be very make it very different than what we see at a normal. Yes. And, and the other thing, too, and that uh, tying it back into the storytelling aspect, um, once we have our top 16, we are going to be doing a media days uh, where we're going to be taking professional photos um, and doing video interviews and whatnot that will be playing throughout to kind of tell the stories of 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 you guys the players um you know because that's always that's always important who are these people and you know be be able to actually uh share that um is is very important to you know to the to the storytelling aspect yes so uh dumping it through here so the uh finals top eight group stage um and all players start from winner's bracket so it doesn't matter if you uh if you have a loss inside the uh inside the group stages uh everyone will start on winners exactly yep yeah. so um top eight from the stage uh or from the group stage go to finals like you said um and the finals will be held in person at a location to be determined some of the locations we have thought about um we've you know, talk to Pure Esports a little bit. The new end game location, um, which is very spacious and would be great for social distancing um, and may even allow for us to have live fans. Um, we're looking at all the options, but whatever we do, we're going to make sure that everything is safe for all of the players. Um, and we're observing all the necessary protocols uh, to keep everyone healthy. Yes. Um, and as for the prize pool, Break it out. Prize pool, um, thousand dollars provided by SAK Gaming, cash money. Um, now the the nice thing is, in kind of keeping with our tradition of of payouts, we try to pay out and make um, everyone who's participating in the up in the upper echelons of the tournament, especially top eight, um, make it at least worth their while. So if let's say you make top eight, you're going to the in person finals. Congratulations, and you at the very least know that you're going to walk home with something in your pocket in this case if you get if you go in to the in-person finals and you get last place you're still taking 20 bucks home um of course first place will walk out with 500 dollars in cash yeah um so all right and of course safety me- measures for the in-person final i mean you know let's highlight that real quickly yeah as i mentioned um we're going to be looking for a location that's going to allow uh for social distancing all the cdc guidelines um Mass will be required. Uh, we will require COVID tests as well for all Arizona Smash League staff and players. So that means you and I will be getting tested, Taylor, um, you know, the cameramen, um, everyone who's going to be working on the event, and all the players will be required to get tested. Um, the nice thing is that testing is covered uh, by insurance and state mandated to be paid uh, to be paid for. So it is 100% free. I know this myself because I've gotten tested twice over the course of the last three months. Both times I had a cold, but you can never be too sick. I've never been tested. So first hand first time experience. <laughs> yeah, it's not that bad. Okay. All right. That people 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 talk about the nose one where it's like, oh, it's down oh, yeah. in the brain. It, it's really not yeah. that bad. Um uh, oh yeah. Okay. Um, and then we just wrapped around to the uh to back to the to the top. Well, let's swing back to the to those items too. Uh which which um, items? To the the safety precautions. Oh, as well. okay. Let me swing back over there. Back to um, so the one thing we're going to do is we're going to have head to head practice stations. Um, we will make sure that everyone has at least a their own station they can play at and probably will have those set up in a head to head format so that um, if you're like, hey, I just want to play by myself. You've got a station. It's social distanced. You can sit down and practice. But if you want to play with another Arizona Smash League player to warm up, you can. We'll have, of course, a head to head stream set up and we'll be sanitizing all stations between uses. OK. All right. So. That sounds good there. 
Um, anything else we want to highlight? Seems it seems um, we hit all the points. Yeah, we got through it pretty quick, which is which is good. This is really exciting, and this is just something that we're you know it's all experimental, and we're our hope is that in the long term this can grow to not just a Smash League but encompass other games. Um, hitting on a couple of things I've seen in chat, um, people asking if Melee will be involved in this. Uh, season one is just is just Ultimate, um, and but the goal is to make this available for Melee as well, probably in season two. I think if everything goes well. Oh yeah. Um, and then to expand it out, not just to Smash, but other games as well. Um, you know, the the hope in the long term is to create an actual esports league where we can have these kind of competitions. So oh, yeah. definitely look out for Melee incoming. Um, and let's see. I'm trying to see if there's anything. Yeah, there's I, anything I, I, I'm i checking questions in chat. So uh, chat, be sure, um, you know, we are doing uh, this is your time now to ask your questions. Um, yeah. we have kind of been slightly ignoring the chat a little bit, uh, just because we've been pushing through all, all these points, but now is the time for you to, uh, to ask us questions. Um, and let's see here. Um, uh, you want to take a uh, Caleb's question? Uh, well, I don't know what AWS Parsec is, so I figured you might know that, that, but <laughs> generally, generally speaking, it sounds like it's rollback fighting games. Um, and yes, we definitely would like, would. I think that would be an option. So if there are games that we feel um, would have a strong following, um, especially in here in Arizona, that we would apply this to, um, something that comes to mind is Tekken, um, Dragon Ball Fighters. That would be down the line something we'd really like to apply this. Yeah. To. Um, and uh, Skarm, yes, we are going to be going from an online league to an offline for the finals. Um, yes. So, so yeah. Um, and uh, you want to T talk about es uh, escapes cap on entrance. I, I don't. Is there a cap on entrance? I don't think there is. Nope. As nope, as long all. as you get into top eight of either two days of qualifiers, you're in the league. Well, also just entrances for the um for the the qualifiers too. So the only requirement is that you're an Arizona resident, and if you qualify for the league in the first qualifier, so let's say you play next Thursday and you make top eight, you are not able to play in the next day's event. So which once you're makes qualified, sense. You're <laughs> yeah, yes, you can't double qualify. <laughs> so um, but but what's nice is is that in an online environment, we're at least giving you two times to qualify. You know, it's not like a single shot, you know, top 16, you're in, you know. Exactly. But you also can't, you know, you also can't qualify in day one and then try to re-qualify in day two with a better seed or, or a better placing overall. So, right. Uh, Steve legal. Yes, Steve will be legal. Um, qualification brackets can be found. Do we have that on the slide? Uh, uh, yes. Smash. Yes, we actually it's on it's on the it's on the slide at the top. So yep. let me uh, sign ups. Yeah. Right there. There they are. Signups are live right now, guys. Smash.gg slash AZSL1 for the qualifier on October 22nd. And Smash.gg slash AZSL2 for the qualifier on the 23rd. Real question, is Ken allowed? Yes, Fiery Ams. Can I commentate? Uh, yeah, I would be down to have you come in for a few matches, brother. For sure, we have um, Sir Potato as our, as our commentary talent. We'll also talk to Taryn Jones. Um, but we will always need a third, so come through, Yam. Yes, yeah, no, we, um, uh, we, we absolutely love, uh, working with you, Yam, so, yeah, come, uh, lo love for you to join us. So, yeah. but yeah, it's, um, it's, especially when, uh, when we get into, um, it, it, it just for talking about commentary, it's gonna be a little bit different. It's, it, I, I would almost, um, what, what would you say the best comparison is the uh from from like a sports perspective w would you say like golf not not uh like we're, we're going to be interjecting video here and there we're going to be tossing the video packages it's going to be it's 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 going to feel a lot more like a um uh like almost like the nba finals yeah, I mean, I think the goal is uh, to just provide as much content as possible on each stream and make it really entertaining. So, um, you know, I think of it as what it really reminds me of. It makes me think of what we're hoping to accomplish is what you see with the the international actually um, in, you know, within esports for Dota. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they have they have uh, documentary videos about uh, about the players, about the teams. And that's what we want to do is we want to. We're hoping to create, um, create 
figures in our community by telling stories about them and getting people excited. Um, you know, that's how you kind of, that's how kind of legends are created. Is yeah. Stories. And, and also those legends turn into dollar signs for sponsors for 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 yes. you, the players, you know. Yeah. Which grows the scene. Um, one question I'm seeing is uh, Ethernet. E Ethernet. Yes. So ETH. So when you make top 16, um, if you make top six, the top 16, Ethernet will be required. If you do not have an Ethernet connection and for some reason you're not able to like say you can't you just you can't afford a, an Ethernet adapter, we will provide you one. Yeah, but um, and, and then uh, like, you know, I, 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 I had like a box of a thousand foot Ethernet cable. If you, I was like, yeah. I was like, hey, if you need a custom cut Ethernet cable, I can come to your house and make sure you have Ethernet to your router. Yeah, I mean, you can come <laughs> set it up if you really need it. Can we enter both qualifiers, Ray Remix? Yes, but you can only qualify once. So if you don't make it on, if you don't make it on the Thursday one, then you can uh, re-enter on Friday. Ooh. I'm shy on camera. Can I skip that part or just audio? Yes. If you if you really don't want if if you do not want or do not have a camera for the group stages, because this is something we can get into as well. Yeah, as actually, yeah. That's so so basically uh, the way the way my system works is we're able to pop in. Uh, uh, holding video and a couple and, and do a couple other things uh to be able to uh to be able to handle that stuff um but yeah it basically the goal is is just for your uh you, you'll be given the web page and you just it basically uh you basically just select your webcam and then you just start and then you don't have to open up obs you don't have to do any of that stuff um and it yep. basically uh it basically sends it to our production control room and then we're able to pop it in pop it out do whatever do whatever we need uh and it's got to feel just like a, a good comparison is the uh is the uh bts's slippy um stuff they use discord when i was looking at their video we're doing something a little different but yeah exactly so yeah i think um the yeah the goal is we want to have the cameras because again that gives us that that real tournament feel of course in person we'll have cameras set up so we don't have to worry about that but we will be asked um what we'll do is we'll send you a questionnaire um once you qualify for the league i'll have questions about you know do you have the an ethernet connection or do you need one provided to you um do you have a webcam uh etc cetera, etc cetera. and even if like if we have players who um maybe they don't have a webcam but they do have a computer that could use a webcam. We could also provide you a webcam if you if you wanted to do that. So there's a lot of options. We have a lot of um, infrastructure at our at our um, available to us at our disposal. That was what I was trying to say. And yeah. um, you know that's the nice thing about keeping this local to Arizona is it gives us a lot of control over the production aspect. And the 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 goal long run is we would love and you know maybe by season three to open this up to the West Coast. Um, and then and then from there to open it up nationally. And I mean, my dream, my hope is that if we can if we can bring strong viewership to this and show that it's worth it to sponsors, we can pay for players flights. So when it becomes safe to travel again, you can be a player. And like, let's say that Pandarian, you know, competes in Washington from Washington and he uh, he qualifies. We'll fly him to Arizona to be part of the finals if he makes it to the finals. Mm hmm. Yeah, and and the uh, and as for as for the length of the season, right now I think we're putting it like on the on the quarters, so every three months or something of, of a yes, cycle. That's, that's rough. Goal. So yeah, you know that it makes it makes it really good there. Um, and so okay, uh, yeah. So you have to give the webcam back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving you a free razor Keo. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you can use it for the uh you can use it for the event yeah but what's also important at least is if if you um if if you don't have a webcam you know we can still do like audio interviews we will we'll, we'll yeah. have we'll have a professional image of you that we pop up into a full screen graphic with your name on it and just say on the phone with so and so that's exactly that's I mean, something we can easily take care of yeah, and, and that's what the idea behind the media days too is. If for whatever reason you're not able to be on camera, then we'll have a lot. We're we're hoping to get a lot of high quality stock footage of all the participants and players. So we'll have a day um, at a, like we'll have a location. We'll have a green screen set up. We'll take a bunch of different photos that we can use um, for for different images for stat fly-ins. Um, you know, we'll 
well, we'll do the video of you doing like a cool pose and then we can take that and green screen it and put it in and stuff like there's gonna be a lot of really cool options. Yeah, um, that we're gonna be able to work with. Um, shout out to Sir Potato, uh, who is our um, our photographer who's going to be at those media days, taking the videos, taking the photos of everybody and helping us put all that together. Um, this has been a big community effort. And this is something that is really kind of pulling all of the all of the big, um, you know, all of our community skills together. We have, you know, obviously, SAK Gaming and our infrastructure, providing the prize pool, providing the event infrastructure. We have Cardinal Horizon providing the broadcast infrastructure and, and um, members of the community provide, you know, um, Sir Potato with commentary, with photo photography, videography, um, Yams, Taryn coming in for commentary. Um, this is going to bring all of Arizona together in, you know, in a way that we just haven't been able to for a very long time. Yeah, no, I, it's, it's genuinely exciting in that regard. Um, I think it's, uh, and, and also, you know, when it comes, when it comes to me, when I, I started the working on the track system in, uh, officially five years ago um uh, of really? yeah uh i've been working on trying to figure this out and doing all the programming myself for five years and you know to um to be able to actually create um you know an ecosystem of modules like i have um i actually just recently one of the really cool things is i started i put the bracket system in a desktop application yeah so um you know there's there's yeah there, there's a whole uh, there there's a lot of stuff with track that you're going to see, uh, especially in the coming months and the, and definitely in the coming year. Um, you know, hopefully, eventually, we're going to start uh, running the uh, running the tournament brackets directly onto it as well. Um, and event registration. You know, it's um, the door is wide open for that. Yeah. Um, and everything is actually starting to be in minimal viable product state to where I'm more i'm actually now looking for developers <laughs> so um if you want if you if you know um html css javascript um and if you want to be able to devote some of your uh some of your spare time i'm not asking you to do this full time um just devote some of your spare time to help help me out and then you know we can uh you know as as the money comes in from other customers um you know we can uh we can you know, we can definitely talk about hiring full time. Um, you know, just uh, send me your resume, uh, Taylor at CardinalHorizon.com, and you know, I definitely want to have the conversation to uh, to be able to be able to work with you. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's so that's it. That's it. I um, yeah, I think yeah. I think we send in your. It, I was say send in your resume if you're interested in working for Cardinal Horizon. Sign up smash.gg slash azsl1 azsl2 um get in there guys it's going to be a lot of fun and we're really excited so thank you for tuning in mm -hmm. and um we will see you guys live here at twitch.tv slash sak gaming tv next thursday for the first qualifier oh yeah that's it's gonna be very exciting all right so thank thank you so much guys take care have a good one guys